In this video, we are going to look at the gross features and the microscopic features of all important primary central nervous system tumors. These tumors are pilocytic astrocytoma, which is tumor of astrocyte cells, glioblastoma multiform, which is also a tumor of astrocyte cell, but pilocytic astrocytoma is grade 1 astrocytoma and glioblastoma multiform is grade 4 astrocytoma oligodendroglioma which is tumor of oligodendrocyte, ependymoma which is tumor of ependymal cells, meningioma which is tumor of the covering of the central nervous system or meninges, meduloblastoma which is an embryonal tumor and swanoma which is the tumor of nerve sith cell. So we have all together 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 major primary central nervous system tumors to be that we need to cover. So first we have pilocytic astrocytoma which is also grade 1 astrocytoma. It is a tumor of astrocyte cell and this is the most commonly seen primary central nervous system tumor in case of children and the site of appearance is cerebellum. So you can look so you can look at the tumor right here in the cerebellum it is well circumscribed that is it has a well defined border and inside the tumor there is a gelatinous mass that is it is myxoid and mucoid so this is the gross feature of pilocytic astrocytoma it mostly occurs in children most common in children at cerebellum and grossly looking it is well circumscribed, it has a well defined border and inside is gelatinous mass. Microscopically, the most important feature is rosenthal fibers. You can see rosenthal fibers more in, properly right here, rosenthal fibers. Rosenthal fibers is highly eosinophilic and rosenthal fibers are formed due to deposition of a certain protein at places and this protein is glial fibrillary acidic protein GFAP glial fibrillary acidic protein the deposition of GFAP at places in the tumor forms ro highly eosinophilic rosenthal fibers so if you look at the tumor under a microscope this is what it looks like there are areas that are dense and then there are areas that are loose the areas that are dense is called dense fibrillary areas because they are rich in fibrillary matter and the areas that are loose are called loose microcytic area so there is alternate dense fibrillary area loose microcytic area and if you zoom in you will also be able to find these eosinophilic granular bodies you can see these bodies that have eosinophilic granules inside of them so the three major features, microscopic features of pilocytic astrocytoma are number one, dense fibrillary areas along with loose microcytic areas. Number two, presence of high deposition of GFAP forming rosenthal fibers. And number three, presence of eosinophilic granular bodies. If there are rosenthal fibers, remember, if there are rosenthal fibers, it's pilocytic astrocytoma. Second is grade 4 astrocytoma, which is also called glioblastoma multiform. And this is the most commonly seen primary central nervous tumor in adults. And in adults, it is seen in cerebrum, especially in the frontal and the temporal lobe of cerebrum. Grossly, this is what it looks like. So in case of pilocytic astrocytoma, we had a well demarcated border, but here the border is not well demarcated you can see that the tumor it is trying to infiltrate the surrounding areas so the tumor is infiltrating number two the reason it is called multiform is because grossly the tumor has multiple forms that is it has variety appearance so called variegated appearance that is there are places where necrosis is going on there are places where hemorrhage is going on there are places that are comp comparatively hard and then there are places that are comparatively soft. So variety of appearance is present. That's why multiform. And third, if this tumor crosses the midline, 
through corpus callosum or anterior commissure, then it takes a butterfly-like shape. So these are the three gross features. Microscopically, this is what it looks like. This is a microscopy. This is a microscopy. So if you look at under the microscope in glioblastoma multiform, there is areas of necrosis, areas of necrosis. And these necrotic areas, they are present in snake like pattern. So serpentine necrosis, these serpentine necrotic areas, they are surrounded by tumor cells that are arranged in ladder like pattern. So these tumor cells, they are arranged in ladder like pattern or parallel to one another. So called pseudo palisading tumor cells. So we have serpentine necrosis surrounded by pseudo palisading tumor cells. Since it is a malignant tumor, so a lot of cells are present. A lot of tumor cells are present. It is hypercellular. A lot of mitosis is going on. That's why a lot of cells are present. So you will also be able to find mitotic figures scattered mitotic figures and if you look at the nucleus they are of various shapes and sizes small nucleus comparatively larger nucleus round nucleus large oval nucleus so you'll find nuclear pleomorphism up third we have oligodendroglioma which is the tumor of oligodendrocyte and it is seen in the white matter of cerebrum grossly it is well circumscribed that is it has a well defined border it is gray white in appearance and gelatinous there are whitish areas which show the focus of calcification there is calcium calcium deposition and there are reddish area which show the focus of hemorrhage this is where bleeding is taking place so you have areas where bleeding is taking place and you have areas where calcium deposition is has taken place so grossly it is well circumscribed gray white in appearance gelatinous in appearance with foci of calcification and foci of hemorrhage microscopically this is what it looks like so under microscope you will be able to see the following features first so you have these cells right you have these tumor cells if you look closely in these tumor cells there's your nucleus and then the cytoplasm is pushed to the periphery and in between the nucleus and the peripheral cytoplasm there is gap that is present so this gives off a fried egg appearance when you fry an egg there's yolk in the middle and then there's your boundary and in middle of the yolk and the boundary it's white similar appearance is seen here as well there's nucleus in the middle the cytoplasm is pushed to the side and there is gap in between the nucleus and the peripheral cytoplasm so fried egg appearance why is there fried egg appearance due to perinuclear halo that is space around the nucleus space around the nucleus second feature as I said, there are foci of calcification. So obviously you will be able to find places that are highly basophilic. These are areas of calcium deposition. And thirdly, you will able to find proliferation of blood vessels in the form of wire like structure. So these are blood vessels, blood vessels. And this is called chicken wire vasculature. So these are the three major microscopic features of oligodendroglioma. Number one, fried egg appearance of the cells due to perinuclear halo. Number two, calcification. And number three, chicken wire vasculature. Next, we have ependymoma, which is the tumor of ependymal cells. Grossly, you can see that it is well demarcated and it is seen at fourth ventricle. Due to the presence of ependymoma, you can see that in this picture, the fourth ventricle is completely filled by tumor cells. So ependymoma is seen in fourth ventricle. Grossly, it is well demarcated. Okay. Microscopically, this is what you will be able to see. There are tumor cells that are arranged in circular fashion with space in the middle. These cells, they kind of look like the petals of a rose or gives of a rose like appearance since there is circular arrangement of tumor cells with space in the middle this pattern is called true rosette 
However, along with true rosette, you will also be able to find same rosette-like arrangement that is circular arrangement of tumor cells. However, in the middle, you will not find empty space. Instead, there is presence of blood vessel. And in between blood vessel and the surrounding tumor cells, there are fibrillary matter, fibrillary matter, fibrillary matter. So this is what we call fibrillary perivascular pseudo rosette. These fibrillary matter, they are cilia actually. And these cilia, they have basal granule. The basal granule is present within the cell and we call it blepharoblast. So those are the major features, microscopic features of ependymoma. You will be able to find two things, the true rosettes and pseudo rosettes. In true rosette, there is empty space in the middle. In pseudo rosette, there is vascular space in the middle. So it is perivascular and in between the vascu in between the blood vessel and the perivascular pseudo rosette, there's fibrillary matter. Okay, meningioma. It is the CNS tumor of the covering of the central nervous system or meninges. Meningioma that is most commonly seen is in arachnoid matter. There are three meninges, pia matter, arachnoid matter, dura matter. It is in the arachnoid matter where meningioma is most commonly seen, especially in the capsule part of arachnoid matter. Okay, so here's a meningioma occurring in meninges. You can see that it is well circumscribed, solid and singly present. This meningioma, it does not infiltrate inside the brain. Instead, it pushes the brain and brings a dent. So it indents the brain surface. Very rarely does it invade the brain. Okay, under microscope, this is what it looks like. So there are your tumor cells that are arranged in circular fashion or world fashion. There are spindle shaped spindle-shaped tumor cells. These spindle-shaped tumor cells, they are arranged in circular fashion or concentric lamella. And this is what we call world appearance. Sometimes in between these, this world appearance, you can find samoma body. What is samoma body? Samoma body is nothing but a necrotic cell surrounded by calcium deposition in concentric lamella. So there's necrotic cell in the middle. It is surrounded by concentric lamella of calcium deposition. That is why you can see this area is highly basophilic. So there is walled pattern of tumor cells along with samoma body in the middle. Then this is a practice question for you. Another practice question for you. Okay, then the second last meduloblastoma. Meduloblastoma is CNS tumor of embryonal origin and meduloblastoma is the most commonly seen malignant tumor in children. I said the most commonly seen primary CNS tumor is pilocytic astrocytoma in children. However, pilocytic astrocytoma is not malignant, it is benign. If it is tokerabhaneko, it is said that which is the most commonly seen primary central nervous system tumor in children which is malignant, then it is meduloblastoma. Grossly looking, meduloblastoma, it is present in, cer in cerebellum. It arises from cerebellum. So you can see the surface of cerebellum. It is invaded, invaded by meduloblastoma. However, it spreads even further and fills up the fourth ventricle which is present in front of the cerebellum. So there's fourth ventricle present, it is filled with meduloblastoma. So protrudes into fourth ventricle as a soft gray white matter and invades cerebellar surface. Under microscopy, you can see the following features. First, the tumor cells, they are small, round and blue in structure. And there are areas where they form rosettes. In case of true rosettes, there was space in the middle. In case of perivascular fibrillary pseudo rosette, there was blood vessel in the middle and in between blood vessel and the cells of the tumor, there was there were fibrillary matter. In case of Homer right rosette, you'll be able to find only fibrillary matter in the middle. So there is fibrillary matter in the middle. So it is a type of pseudo rosette called Homer right rosette, where there are cells at the periphery and fibrillary matter in the middle. 
finally you have schwannoma which is nerve set tumor if you look grossly by the way this is most commonly seen in eighth cranial nerve it arises from cranial nerve and your uh, spinal nerve but then most commonly it is seen in eighth cranial nerve so in case of schwannoma you can see that the tumor is solitary and well encapsulated so it has a well defined border and it is solitarily present it does not invade the peripheral nerve means the nerve at the side for example if this is a tumor of eighth cranial nerve then this tumor does not infiltrate the eighth cranial nerve no no it simply pinches or pushes or presses on the nerve so this is your schwannoma schwannoma if you look at the microscopic features you will be able to find areas of hypercellularity means there are lots of cells present and at the same time you will also be able to find areas of hypocellularity that is less number of cells are present area of hypercellularity is called antony a area area of hypocellularity is called antony b area okay let's revise the whole thing last okay let's revise the whole thing so there's your pilocytic astrocytoma glioblastoma multiform oligodendroglioma ependymoma meningioma medulloblastoma and schwannoma pilocytic astrocytoma it is the most commonly seen primary cns tumor in children and it has a very good prognosis because it is benign it is seen in cerebellum grossly it is well circumscribed cystic and has gelatinous matter inside microscopically you will be able to see three things rosenthal fibers where gfap deposition is present biphasic tumor that is there is presence of dense fibrillary area and loose microcytic area as well as eosinophilic granular bodies then you have glioblastoma multiform which is a grade 4 astrocytoma most common primary cns tumor in adults it has a very bad prognosis because it is quite malignant it is seen in cerebrum in the frontal and temporal lobe it is infiltrating in nature it is multiform or it has a variegated appearance somewhere there is necrosis somewhere there is hemorrhage going on if it crosses the midline through either corpus callosum or your primary or anterior commissar then butterfly shaped tumor is formed uh, microscopically you can find necrotic areas surrounded by pseudo palisading pattern and necrosis in serpentile pattern you can find nucleus of various steps in sizes or pleomorphic nucleus and then as well as glomerular body that are bodies of blood vessels oligodendroglioma which is tumor of oligodendrocyte which is seen in white matter of cerebrum uh, it is well circumscribed gray white in appearance gelatinous mass you can find areas of hemorrhage and areas of calcification microscopically it gives up tumor cells that are fried egg appeared they appear fried egg in nature due to perinuclear halo chicken wire vasculature and calcification is present ependymoma for ependymal cells uh, epen it is seen in fourth ventricle up to the age of 20 years in adult it is seen in spinal cord it is well demarcated tumor microscopically you can find true rosettes and perivascular fibrillary pseudo rosettes then meningioma that of meninges especially in the arachnoid matter of meninges it is well circumscribed solitary solid and it just indents the brain it rarely invades the brain it is uh, under microscopy there are spindle shaped tumor cells that are arranged in world pattern and in the middle there is samoma body medulloblastoma it is embryonal tumor seen in cerebellum most commonly seen malignant primary cns tumor in children it pro it starts in the cerebellum but then it protrudes into fourth ventricle as well present in the form of soft gray white matter under microscopy you can find small rounded blue cells that are pres that are present in rosette like pattern with fibrillary matter in the middle called homer right rosette then finally schwannoma which is tumor of nerve set which arises from cranial and spinal nerve root most commonly from eighth cranial nerve called acoustic schwannoma it is encapsulated solid yes it is indeed encapsulated solid tumor and under microscopy you can find hypocellular hypocellular antony body b and hypercellular antony body a which also contain verruque bodies